Hi, my name is Jason Webster. I'm Bex Hybrids, Practical Farm Research Innovation Lead. Today we are at the Central Indiana PFR Center, and behind us is one of the more innovative plots we've done here at this uh, PFR Center in the last few years. This is our sub-irrigation study. This is where we're putting in tile to use not only for drainage, but we're also using it to bring water back in to sub-irrigate. With me today is Jason Gayheimer. Jason is the operations lead here at the PFR Center at Central Indiana, here in Atlanta, Indiana. Jason, tell us a little bit about this study. How did we put the tile in? Tell us about how the tile was placed and how the system works. So what we did, uh, 2009, well, they came out and we did, uh, we did the installation and everything out here is three inch tile, spaced 15 foot apart at a two foot depth on the contour of the ground. So that's what we have out here um, for the last four years. Um, we've just basically looked at the sub-irrigated versus complete no drainage, non-irrigation. Um, and we've seen some excellent results with that. So we've had this system in for four years now and we've seen a little bit of difference in the type of year Mother Nature mm -hmm. has given us in regard to precipitation. Tell us about how the yield response has been in dry years versus years where we've had plenty of uh, natural preci pre precipitation. Yes, that's a good question. So 2011, 2012, we were, we were extremely dry. We had periods where we just didn't get any rainfall when we really needed it. Uh, so we were able to sub-irrigate quite a bit those two years. Um, being able to keep that water table exactly where we wanted it. Uh, was an extreme benefit. We saw anywhere from maybe 50 to 60 plus bushel advantage from our sub irrigation in those type of scenarios. Um, so that, that played right into our hand there those first two years. Um, 2013 we had a pretty average year um, and we still saw some really good yield results there as well. Um, but when you're talking on, a, on the most perfect year we probably had in a long time in 2014, uh, we were still able to see a four bushel, right around a four bushel increase out here with this sub irrigation system. And a lot of that may be due to the fact that it is still gonna drain. We still have drainage out here. So th it's only gonna let the water table get so high. Um, if it gets above that, we're not gonna, it's not gonna allow it to sit in the water and, and you know, cause some wet feet for long periods of time. It's gonna also drain there as well. So I think that's where um, it's a win-win situation with this sub irrigation system. Exactly, a very exciting study, being able to control the water coming out of this particular system for natural drainage but then being able to utilize that same system to bring water back in to irrigate during the growing season. Just, uh, we're getting a, a twofer in this situation and uh, just agronomically a very sound program. All right, we're back out here in our sub-irrigation study at Central Indiana PFR. And you know, we've just talked about some of the yield advantages we've seen from having a sub-irrigation system in place. And I guess what we're trying to do is maybe improve it just a little bit more. Trying to get even more yield benefits from this particular system. How are we doing that? Well, we're gonna split this plot into different sections and we're gonna focus on drainage efforts as well as sub-irrigation. And one of the things that we're doing is putting in a structure that's going to allow us to monitor and move the water table. With me today is, is Jeremy Miners from AgRem LLC. AgRem is, is the designer of this particular sub-irrigation and drainage system. Jeremy, tell me what we're doing in, in regard to just drainage, the new drainage components we're doing within the system here at Central Indiana PFR. Certainly, Jason. So what we are focusing on in terms of the drainage aspects is we have a contour drainage system installed that previously functioned as a sub-irrigation system. Right. With the gates open, and here is a, an example of a control gate, the system functions purely in a drainage mode, allowing the water table to be drained down to the bottom of the tile lines with a small perch effect in between. Right. So this is actually being more of a control for what we're going to look at in terms of what is called a con controlled drainage system. Controlled drainage system is where you have the drainage system, but you actually raise the water table by placing in a straight PVC pipe right. or slide gates which allows the water table to be raised to the level of that pipe. When you have a control drainage system, it allows you during the summer months to be able to raise the water table, mm -hmm. allowing more water for the roots of your crop. In addition, if, if you have it closed during the winter times, it allows for a reduction in the amount of nutrients that can be lost from your field if you're doing a fall application. Exactly. The, what makes a control drainage system, though, not a sub-irrigation system, is that a control drainage system doesn't have any means of adding water back into it. It only depends on natural precipitation. Exactly. Yep. So being able to control that water table is very important uh, with tile systems here today. Now, one of the other components we're going to look at is the sub-irrigation side. We're going to make improvements to this study. And again, not only being able to get water out of the system, but now we want to bring water into the system with the sub-irrigation. So tell us what we're doing with your installation system being able to separate this trial into two separate sub-irrigation systems. We, to answer your question, we had the 
the field plot that was all previously sub-irrigation. We have taken approximately a quarter of the field and put that into a contour drainage system by leaving a gate open. We will then be able to monitor it in terms of using a field connect moisture probe from Deere and Company, mm -hmm. and also be able to analyze the yield data that we get as a result. The next section, which is approximately a quarter of the, the field, mm -hmm. is going to be operated as a control drainage system. We won't be putting water back into it, but we will have the gate closed during the time of the year and be able to adjust it using the information that we receive from a field connect for that particular right. gate. We then will have two sites that will be looking at sub-irrigation. Exactly. We've got our control structure in place now for drainage. We're going to go out into the field and we're going to place our field connect sensors. Um, they're, 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 those sensors are going to be the ones that tell us when we need to take water out of the system as well as when to put water back in to sub-irrigate. So let's go to the field and take a look at some of the field connect sensors from John Deere. All right, we're out here in the field and we're installing the John Deere moisture probes out here in the sub-irrigation and drainage study. And Jeremy, tell us how this moisture probe works out here in the field. Certainly. So this is the uh, Field Connect from John Deere Integrated Solutions Department. But what they do is they are able to read moisture levels at multiple different levels uh, at one site. And we are going to have four of these different probes out here. And it's going to be able to read it at a 6 inch, a 12 inch, a 20 inch, and a 40 inch level. For our tile, our tile is all installed at approximately two feet worth of depth. Mm -hmm. With these probes, we'll be able to track that water table uh, along its whole route and even what's going on below the water table. And for the drainage site, what we would expect to see mm -hmm. is that we will have at that tile depth, uh, the tile depth, we'll see the, the water table drawn down that during periods after a rain. For the control drainage, depending on how much natural precipitation, we anticipate seeing water levels being higher than where the depth of the tile is. And then for the right. sub-irrigation, you'll actually be able to see when irrigation mm -hmm. be begins, you'll see the water table rise, right. and then you'll be able to see the crop utilizing that water mm -hmm. throughout the, the growing season. So for the area where we have sub-irrigation and we want to do an automated system versus a manual, we're going to use this probe to tell us how much water to bring into the sub-irrigation system versus how much water we need to take back out. So we've got both scenarios. These probes will be telling us basically when to put water in and when to take water out. So a grower would get a username and password for myjohndeer.com. He can log in and he can see all of his moisture readings right there online. Correct. That okay. is correct. That's what we're planning on doing here at the Central Indiana PFR site. We're going to put these probes in and we're going to monitor those, those moisture readings throughout the growing season and we'll make adjustments taking water out and bringing water back in.